Welcome back, pet parent. I am so excited for today's episode. I love bringing people back on the podcast for you, especially the ones that you're constantly reaching out to me going, when are they coming back? When are they coming back? And so today's guest is one of those people that you guys have been requesting for quite a while. I'm so excited to bring the natural pet doctor back to you, Dr. Katie Woodley. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And I'm just so grateful to be here. So thanks again. And thanks for asking me to be back. Yes. I I mean, everybody loves you. You already know. <laughs> I don't know about everyone, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I might trigger a few people with some of the things I say, but that's okay. <laughs> no, but you say it in such a nice way. There are definitely some people that say similar things that are just not as nice about it. And so it can be harsher, um, but that's okay because you know, we all have to learn one way or another. And some people learn better when they get a swift kick in the butt. Right? <laughs> well, my swift kick in the butt came when I had three pets pass from cancer. So, you know, here's the thing, like, we're all doing the best that we can with the knowledge we have. And we all started from somewhere, right? Like, when I look at my journey, my journey evolved from so many pet parents who are listening, where I was feeding kibble, I gave vaccines, I was doing the best that I could, and I thought it was the best. And then I had an awakening. And I just realized there was a different way. And that way resonates with me. And we have a lot of great research now that also supports a different way for optimizing health for our pets. But I also recognize not everyone's at that point. And so if we can share things in a way that kind of helps plant seeds so they can sit with it and then make decisions down the road when it feels right for them, then fantastic. Yeah. Knowing better is the first step. Even if you're not ready to make any big changes yet, like you don't know what you don't know. So sometimes you just have to hear things over and over in different places and from different people for it to like really set in and be like, when you're ready, like, you'll know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you'll have that like light bulb moment and things will just start to like click and fall into place. And so um, really, really happy that there are people like you, but you're, you have done such an incredible job, especially in the last like year and a half, I want to say I've really been like, super impressed with the growth you've had on social media. Um, Mm -hmm. Not just because like, you know, as a solopreneur, like it's impressive, right? But just (laughs) the reach to get that information to more people is so valuable and so needed. And it's like, yay, keep going. So I'm like, really thrilled. It's not that. always easy, right? As you know, like it's, it comes with that, uh, you know, I have a much thicker skin now than I did before. And it also comes from growing myself as a person too, right? Realizing like, I'm not here to change people. I'm here to plant seeds. And you know, it's not always my way or the, high, it's not my way or the highway. Like we all do things differently. There's different ways to approach health. Um, and also to the, the awakening around holistic medicine. Like I have different tools in my toolbox than other veterinarians also. And so it's a matter of giving people the options and then allowing them to choose. And I was going to say too, one of the things also, unfortunately, and it's a big mission of both of ours, and you do such an amazing job with your podcast and sharing and educating people also, and I so appreciate that, um, is there's a lot of fear around what we do too. Um, So it's helping people to break through and outside of that fear to take that next step. And even if it's just one step, that's a huge breakthrough for so many people. And so really creating and cultivating a safe space to explore that and investigate and try it out with your pets. You could always try it out with, you know, yourself first, too, because a lot of the things we recommend, like feeding yourself a better quality diet and see how you feel and do these experiments with yourself and then, you know, implement some of those changes for your pets. And that can make it much easier, too, to kind of dive in and, and change over to a more integrative, holistic approach. Absolutely. And I really like the way you talk about a toolkit. Um, 
because that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today was a piece that you have in your toolkit that while I've heard other some other veterinarians talk about it, I don't hear them talk about it as much as you do. And I, I'm really interested in the value that you find in um, the hair mineral what is, hair mineral analysis. Analysis. Yes, the hair tissue that? mineral analysis, I, uh, HTMA <laughs> for short. <laughs> so where we take fur and we analyze what's going on inside your pet over the past three months. It's the neatest test. We do it. It's one of our go-tos because of the the results we receive. And then it gives me it gives me the puzzle pieces to put together then to create individualized healing protocols for my patients. and. Before I knew about this, because it's just not commonly done in the pet space, it's more common in the functional medicine human space. Um, so there's a lot of functional medicine human practitioners, naturopaths that are actually utilizing this tool. And so it's not commonly done. So I wouldn't be surprised if someone listening is like, my vet never recommends this. Of course not. They don't even know it exists. They would have no idea how to interpret it either. And so it's it, but it's a very valuable piece of information. And I love when my my patients, my clients take these test results and show their vet and they go, that's really interesting. And then they can learn about it too. So they can start implementing that for their clients. So there's a trickle on effect that's really wonderful to see too in the vet industry when that happens. So what are you what are you looking for? What does this test tell you? Yeah. So a hair tissue mineral analysis test, so HTMA for short, much easier um, to say than the tongue twister. So essentially what we're doing is it's a small amount of fur. So if you have a hairless cat, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do these tests. Um, but most pets have some amount of fur. It's about a tablespoon of fur that we we collect from the, the pet and we send that off to the lab they run the analysis on there. And what it's telling us is the past three months of cellular health status of your dogs or your cats, or you can do it on both. And this is where looking at calcium, vitamin, mineral excesses, deficiencies, we get an idea too of heavy metals, which is really common. And there aren't other tests available at this moment for pets to assess that. And so, for example, a lot of the allergy patients that I treat, we think it's allergies. We assume it's allergies. But when we run these tests, I end up seeing things like copper excesses in the tissues. I end up seeing heavy metals like aluminum and mercury, so their bodies aren't able to detox. So when we think about that, what's that mean? Those toxins are building up. They're getting more inflamed. What does that inflammation look like? Scratching, ear infections those hot, itchy, hot spots. And so if we go down the path of assuming that this is an allergy and we go the conventional traditional route of like Apoquel, Cytopoint, and you're wondering why isn't that working for my pet? Because it doesn't work for a lot of pets that I see. It's probably not an allergy issue and we're treating the wrong thing. So these hair tissue tests let us go deeper. The other big important parts too are they can tell us about digestion if we have sensitivity to like sugars, what's the insulin doing? If we have insulin resistance, it also looks at the, the nervous system status. So for example, sympathetic nervous system, that's like our fight or flight response. It's really important to keep us safe. Like if a tiger's chasing you, you want to run, right? It's going to kick in, you're going to run or you're going to fight something. But that system shouldn't be in like on all the time. And unfortunately, a lot of people and pets are stuck in what we call sympathetic overdrive, where they're constantly on, they're constantly going. And a good way to think about this is for yourself when you think about like, wow, I just feel like anxious or like all the time, like I can't shut down, I can't sleep. That's most likely what is happening is we're stuck in sympathetic overdrive. So our body can't shift into a resting state. That's the parasympathetic. That's what we want because that's where the rest and digest where we can digest the food, we can actually calm down, we can create a healing environment. 
So it's really powerful to know if your pet's stuck in a sympathetic overdrive, because then we can use tools to support adrenal glands. We can calm down the brain. We can calm down the nervous system. That's going to optimize gut health. That's going to optimize the microbiome. It's going to help the body detox much better. And so what I love about this test is it gives me all of that information. I can see how well your pet's detoxing. I can see the level of inflammation. And it's a matter of looking at it from there's a lot of ratios that it'll show up. That's why I say like it's really hard to interpret without the training involved. But it gives us that information when you're trained to understand what those numbers mean. A deficiency does not mean we supplement because those vitamins and minerals are all interconnected. Some will go high to keep other values low. For example, zinc and copper have an inverse relationship with each other. So if zinc is low because we're stressed, a lot of times we can see copper go up, but we don't, if we see copper low, we don't always supplement copper just because it's low, because it might be being forced low because of other factors like inflammation or other vitamins and minerals. So it is quite complicated, but health is complicated, right? Like it's not as simple as like, just do that or do this. Yes, we try to make it as easy as possible, but there's lots of layers that make up health and make up how our bodies work. Um, but this test is nice because it's not invasive. We have pet parents from all over the world that send us fur samples because it doesn't degrade. And we get to see a three-month snapshot at the cellular health level. Whereas, for example, on the other side, when we take a blood sample, the blood sample is like essentially like the snapshot right now. If we eat certain foods, it can change that. I view it as like the highway the highway of the vitamins, nutrients passing through, passing through to the organs, passing through to the blood, passing through to the skin. Whereas when we look at the fur, we're actually looking at what's going on. What are those cells bathing that hair follicle? And that hair's growing and it takes about three months for that, that cuticle to actually harden in that hair follicle in the skin. And so we're going to have, it's being bathed by all those nutrients, those cells, the heavy metals potentially, because heavy metals will also be pushed out through the skin and through the fur. So we get a much better, more clear idea of what's happening at a deeper layer. So if we see, for example, on blood work, calcium is normal. Good. Because the, the blood has to maintain a very set strict standard where calcium and other vitamins, phosphorus and other things, they're strict. Like the pH needs to be well maintained in order for us not to die. That's how serious it is. Whereas what's going to happen is, is the blood's going to draw from the tissues and the cells. And so tissue levels can be depleted. They will be depleted first because we have a reservoir. So now we can pick up potential issues before symptoms form. I'm going to repeat that. That's really important. We don't want to wait for symptoms to develop. This is where a true proactive approach is. We have functional medicine tests where we can test and get an idea of where imbalances are before we see disease, because things will be occurring before we get a diagnosis, before we see a symptom of itchiness, before we see diarrhea. And so that is multiple reasons why. We love, like, I love these tests and they're so powerful because it really gives me an idea of, okay, we have some deficiencies here. We have excesses here. The body's working harder here. Mm -hmm. Let's use these types of supplements and foods and herbs rather than guessing and hoping it works. So it's a very helpful test and people can access it from anywhere in the world unless there's some weird custom delay. But honestly, if that comes up very rarely, and usually we can find a way around it. So um, yeah. that's what I love about that too, because some of the functional medicine tests that we have here in the States can be really hard for pet parents across the world. And it's frustrating. They want to know more. They're learning about these things, but they just can't access those tests because they don't have it in their country. But this, the for like the hair tissue mineral analysis test can be done from anywhere. Wow. That does sound incredibly powerful as a, like a functional medicine practitioner, you just have so much information there that helps you. And I really do like the proactive part of it. If I, if you don't mind, because I, I like, I like to be the devil's advocate sometimes. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm used to it. It's okay. <laughs> one of, yeah. Like one of, 
the things I think about, and, and I think maybe it's just been like the clients that I've worked with. Um, I know I can generally tell pretty quickly when I'm talking to a pet parent, like, and it's hard to, it's hard to say this to them, but a lot of times it's like, okay, you are definitely part of the problem. Like your yeah. energy, your like demeanor, how you're going about, like, you're definitely part of the problem. <laughs> right. Um, and the reason that I bring that up is because I was recently introduced to like a pre-cancer screening test. Yeah. And my initial thought is like, that's amazing, right? We would want to know this and be able to change course and hopefully like circumvent this whole thing from happening. The other part of me is like, okay, we have so many pet parents out here who are just like hyper focused and aware and like literally helicopter like helicopter moms yes. right on top of their pets and it's like it's probably for the majority of people this is a really wonderful proactive tool but like I feel like there are some people that this is like just like feeding into their own psychosis <laughs> terrible to say so you know, I, I can, I can understand. And, um, yeah, I've been around long enough and worked with plenty of pet parents and just on the, the human health side too, you know, going through my husband's health journey, I can totally, I can totally understand. Um, this is where like, there's a quote, we can't feed a stressed body back to health. And it goes back to the gut brain access and connection and stress. And it's a huge pillar of health that isn't talked about enough. And this is something that, you know, I work with a lot of pet parents and clients that I work with too, because they come, you know, they're, I'm usually like the 10th opinion, mm -hmm. right? Like I wish people found me like the first hit, right? They're like, we're being proactive. When I get that, right. I'm like, holy smokes, like I dance, I celebrate, like, <laughs> yes, like we're winning. <laughs> but the reality is, is that so many people aren't aware of this side until you're stuck with like a really sick pet and nothing else is working. And so what can happen a lot of times is that we get stuck in the, I have to fix this. I have to know everything. I have to do all that I can. And we have a lot of guilt and shame around ourselves that if we don't fix our pet, we're a failure. So we have to go back to, so if someone's like, what is she saying? Right? Like if this is triggering you, it's okay. Take a breath. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't mean that there's any fault of their own because there's a lot around the emotional health piece, the spiritual piece, like a lot of our stories and our perceptions and our lenses we look through. And what happens is, is when we start learning more about that spiritual side, the emotional health side, there's an energy in everything. And when we step into this like frantic, like I've got to fix them, like this chaotic energy, that energy doesn't allow us to create a healing environment. Now, we're not saying you caused your pet to get sick, right? but there are things that we can do to help them. And it's really nice when you awaken to this and you see it and you become aware of like, wow, I'm actually doing that. Like I need to learn to breathe. So doing like box breathing is a simple, easy tool, like four breaths in, hold for four breaths, four breaths out, hold for four breaths. It actually stimulates your vagus nerve, the biggest nerve that's connecting your gut to your brain, and it will put you into parasympathetic nervous system state. That is the healing state we want to be in. So by utilizing some calming tools to ground yourself and become present once again with our pets versus like, I've got to fix them. I have to know everything. I need to know the why. I'm a big like, if anyone's listened to me, I'm a big fan of like, why? Why is this happening? Where does this come from? That's why I like the hair tissue test. But here's the reality of that question. Like both Jessica and I are not the same person we are right now as we were when we first started this podcast. Like cells have died, they've turned over, things have changed internally. There might be aha moments that I've experienced from Jessica that have changed my perception and the way that I think about things. And then the same thing's happening to you if you're listening and the same thing's happening to your pets. So in terms of that, that energy is really, really important and giving yourself grace that the why is changing. 
like as we go through our day, as we learn new things, as we experience new experiences, as we're exposed to different toxins and chemicals, right? I went for a run earlier and I went by someone and I could smell like the, I always noticed like the laundry detergent, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they must use like a, you know, a fragrant laundry. Like that's a chemical I'm inhaling, right? Like that's something, that's an extra stressor on my body it has to deal with. Now I have faith that I give myself tools and build it up to strengthen them. And this is where going back to why this is important, if we're stuck in that frenetic, frantic energy, we're not allowing the space for our pets to be, because they're present beings, they're not thinking the way we are, but also to for you to take a breath and also allow a healing environment to occur. So with like these cancer tests and a lot of these functional medicine tests that are not now becoming available, I do see where like, we need to like use a supplement, we need to use a thing, we have to fix that, we have to do it, when in reality, less is more. And I actually want people to take a step back and assess their emotional health and how they're feeling on day to day. Do you feel tense? Do you feel anxious? Are you sleeping well? Do you have constant fear like you're going to screw this up? Well, guess what? We're all learning. Like I'm going to screw things up. Yeah. And so when we get to that, that mindset of like giving ourselves grace and space, like we are all learning, we're exploring a different way. And sometimes we fix things and sometimes we don't. I didn't fix my German Shepherd Finn with his brain tumor. But what I did is I learned the power of presence and enjoying my time with him. And I gained an extra year of amazing quality of life when I was given a week. And that was really important to me. And it was really hard. And so it doesn't mean it's easy. This is hard. It's really hard managing and trying to support as best as you can your sick pet. But at the end of the day, it's not another supplement. It's not another herb. It's not another opinion. It's not a, it's not another thing. A lot of times it comes down to us actually taking care of ourselves and creating space for presence and gratitude and love and just being with our pets. And I know that sounds very woo woo and probably really weird. However, that is what I found through like my experiences and it takes time to get to that place. So as you're exploring that, you know, recognizing like this is not an overnight transition and it's going to feel really uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. I agree with you, Jessica, like it's really important that we get stuck in a fixer mindset and we can't fix everything. Yeah. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what allopathic medicine has taught us right that's yes what it's that's it's, that's the thing that's exactly right like a pill for every l and we've turned it into an herb for every l right yes we're using the same mindset but we feel better because we're like this is safer mm -hmm. but in reality we miss the bigger picture which is what true holistic medicine is holistic with a w and that includes your environment, that includes the emotional, spiritual, mental part of our being. And it's not talked about enough mm -hmm. because, and because it's not one thing. It's not one way, right? Well, There's multiple ways to approach that. Like we all have different can... beliefs and religions and things like that. And that's beautiful. Well, and you can't sell a supplement for it. <laughs> <laughs> true. That's also true. <laughs> can't make money from this. So no, you <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, that is a reality also. Um, and this is where like, you know, just exploring that side, I love, uh, there's a lot of great animal communicators, the energy workers, the light healers, they're all called different things. And there are different modalities, even in that space, Reiki energy, like these are tools that everyday pet parents can learn. And I'm not saying to add another tool into your toolbox, because here's the thing, you don't need to do a course on how to take a deep breath. But most of us aren't breathing properly every day and it's creating a sympathetic overdrive state. Yeah. And so this is where, you know, I see it on hair tissue tests too. I see like severe adrenal stress and I'm like, huh, that's interesting, right? And the pets don't always manifest it as like manic states or stressed, but we're usually not running those tests on healthy pets. So now that energy that's stagnant and stuck that they might be kind of mirroring from the environment they're in because we're so busy and we're not present. 
is now manifesting as a physical health issue. Mm -hmm. It always starts as an emotional health, like energy thing. Everything starts as an energetic, like stagnation. And if we don't heal it, resolve it, or allow it to be an integrated in, then it's going to continue to develop into something physical. Mm. And so it's just something to think about, um, you know, and it's, it's a big part of what I've shifted to, especially in the last year and a half. So it's interesting, you know, your comment at the beginning, because I've realized through my journey, I was actually feeding into the whole mindset of like, just give that, do that, do that. And then taking a step back and looking at the true holistic approach and really stepping into the, the Chinese medicine theory of like things are constantly changing. And when my will to change this and fix this, I'm actually creating resistance to healing. Mm. And it was just a fascinating concept to sit with and be with. And it was uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable every day. They're still like, I want to fix this. And I'm like, that's, am I creating a resistance to this? Are we yeah. missing potential? Is there a deeper layer here that we need to address that does not involve another supplement? or a change in diet. Because we mm -hmm. always think it's the diet, it's the food, it's the supplement, it's the herb, it's not working. And in reality, a lot of times it comes down to just being okay with our situation we're in, even though it's hard. Mm. That's powerful. And I was actually, my husband actually just told me this yesterday. I don't know where he heard it from, but apparently Elon Musk said it. He said that he doesn't want to be a fixer. He doesn't want to be a problem solver because that's what you will spend your life doing is chasing one problem to the next. Cause there's, there's, we're never going to run out of problems to solve. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like energetically exhausting to do. Yeah. That. And it's always saying something's wrong. Yeah. Like how does that feel? Mm -hmm. Right. When we look at ourselves, I need to fix that. I need to do that. Like, um, and it's like, wow, like we're not wrong. Like there's nothing wrong with us. Like it's a perception and it comes from marketing. It comes from stories like from our, I mean, there's, we just went way weird way, right. That we weren't expecting in this like podcast, but I do think that it's just not talked about enough because we're carrying around like a ball and chain of this baggage. And then we're brought in like our, our pets. And a lot of times they're coming here with like a karmic lesson for us to learn. I know that's like, you know, this doesn't mean like you can't be Catholic or your belief system, like all of those things, but there are lessons for us to learn. That's why things repeat, right? Where you're like, why does this always happen to me? Whereas if we ask, what lesson am I here to learn that I'm not learning is a very different question, right? It's kind of like the, well, why is the, like, why, why does that happen? It's the why question. And yeah. so if we constantly see pets coming into our lives that are having health issues, my question would be, what is there that I'm resisting? And where can I be, like, be, a, be just be with it? Where can I be? Not mm -hmm. like physically somewhere, but am I like resisting? And where can I let go of some of this fixing energy and the resistance? Because maybe all that pet needs and the lesson they were brought into your life for was to just receive your love. Hmm. Yes, we want to help their quality of life. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not that crazy. Like, I totally understand. Like, there are things that we still like want to support them and help their quality of life. And they're still, I still recommend and practice the five pillars and looking at foundational health and looking at the entire ecosystem. But for this specifically, that spiritual, mental, emotional side, like I just, I, I agree with you. I see the frantic energy and it keeps people stuck. And it's, it is awful to watch because you physically feel their pain from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it never resolves because they're not aware of it. They're not open, which is not, it is no fault of their own. But at some point, we do need to ask ourselves, and hopefully this is like for everyone here, if you're being triggered by this, I would just ask to reflect on it. Like sit with it. You can send me hate mail if you'd like, but just sit with it. <laughs> sit with it and just ask yourself, where am I resisting? Mm -hmm. What are they here to teach me? 
right. and you don't have to have the answer right away, but it'll make you take a step back and relax and sit and be with it versus mm-hmm. like, I need to go and research for the rest of the night. You know, I, so yeah. many people are losing such important sleep because they're trying to find the answer deep in a Facebook group or, you know, online in another rabbit hole, or they're trying another supplement that's, you know, Susie recommended on some other like Facebook group because it worked for her pet. And we don't know their situations or their like realities. And I'm not saying those groups aren't valid. Like I have a group, right? (laughs) So I totally understand the power of community. But at some point, we do have to ask, what what is the goal here? And how am I feeling? And what is the purpose of all this? Because at some point, we all lose the battle. We're not here forever. (laughs) And we do sometimes have to let go. And it was interesting in my Blueprint community, we do a weekly Q&A. And yesterday, yesterday was our Q&A. And one of our members actually brought up One of, um, we share a lot of like wins and transformation. And we talk a lot about this because it's so important. And she brought up how her dog who has like joint issues, has a heart issue. And she said, you know, we were able to get him to a place where I was like, okay, you know, I'm good. Like he's not a hundred percent fixed. And when she reached that point and let go the resistance of healing the rest of him, the rest was fixed. Wow. He was like healed. And she was like, it literally was like within a week of letting the rest go and the control. And that's how powerful this can be. I'm not saying it happens to everyone, but it was just, it just is amazing when you hear stories like that, where you have peace Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now, like your pet's less itchy, your pet feels better. And you're like, Oh, okay, I let that go. I wasn't even thinking about trying to fix him. And then it just happened because the energy shifted. It was allowed to move. It wasn't stagnant anymore. Wow. Yeah, that is so incredibly powerful. And to to your point, like that is one of like the biggest people are like, why are you, why are you telling me I need to, I'm I'm coming to you to help my dog. And why are you telling me to meditate? (laughs) Because I feel your energy. (laughs) I mean, here's the thing too, like, I'm not, well, here's when I say I'm not a meditator, because I'm not good at meditating, right? Does anyone else resonate with that? Like, yeah, here's, here's the reality. What, what most of us have come to view meditation as is this like Zen state where there's nothing in your head, right? Well, unfortunate, we all have egos and we have voices in our head, right? We all have like these things that are telling us stories and what we should do, what we're not, what we're not good enough, we're not worthy, right? And they come up when we get quiet. And so people think I'm doing meditation wrong. It doesn't work for me. When in reality, if you just sat there and just let it be, and you're like, it is what it is, you know, Mm -hmm. this voice is going to come through and it's, it, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I can welcome it and say, Hey, like, it's okay. You can go take a seat over there and then continue on. So when you shift the expectations around what you feel like it should be like compared to this, like grandiose, like Buddha meditation, then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, it doesn't have to be that way. Your meditation could be walking outside. That's what I resonate with is like getting out in nature not with a phone, leave the phone. (laughs) Like, (laughs) don't look at the phone, put the phone away, turn the news off. Like those two things right there will change your life. Like disconnecting to connect with mother nature, connect with the energy of the earth. And that will, you will feel it. And you will notice so much more around you that you may not have noticed before. And Mm -hmm. so that's where like the breathing exercise is just movement going for walks. It doesn't have to be a half marathon. You know, we take it to extremes as humans. We're like, you have to do all this. Like if you're eating any processed food, you're horrible. And it's like the same with pets, right? Like, my God, you're feeding kibble. You're killing them. Well, no, you're probably like not, to be honest. Like it's not ideal in our realm once we like learn about all the things. But at some point we look at like, there's a lot of pets living to older ages that are on kibble. And maybe those pet parents are in like this really great state of Zen. 
right. don't know, right? We don't do we don't do research on that. Right. But it's really important for gut health. It's important for the microbiome. It's important for the brain health. Um, so that's where I always like laugh a little bit of like we're chasing, we're chasing like all this like perfect diet. Oh, that supplement will like heal all the mitochondrial damage we've done. <laughs> like when in reality, I'm like, yes, I, I use supplements. I try to eat my best. I help my cats and support them with supplements, but I don't fill their bowl with supplements, mm -hmm. you know, and I yeah. think it's just that shift in, in the way that we're thinking about what is, what is true health. Right. And it's not a frantic energy. That's not true health. It's, the, yeah. it's not frantic energy of just trying to fix everything and heal everything and, you know, heal past pets that have passed. Like I see that all the time and it breaks my heart. I'm like, you're stuck in a prison. Mm -hmm. Like you literally cannot win because they're yeah. already passed. Like there's yeah. nothing more you can do. And mm -hmm. it's, and then we carry that forward to our new pets and we just, you know, sitting and being with it and letting it go, knowing you were doing the best that you did, you could with the knowledge you had at the time. And now you have more knowledge and your pet gets to live on with you through that to help guide you on this new journey and this new path. That's how like Finn and Stanley and Callie, they're still within my heart. They're still in like spirit around me. I can connect with them. You know, I can ask for guidance or strength at any moment because their energy, their spirits are still around. They're not here in physical form, which kind of sucks, right? I'd still love to have like Finn sitting over here, yeah. you know, watching me work. But I know that because of my journey with him, like my cats live a very different life now. And any future dog that we get in the future, probably a German Shepherd puppy at some point, will be raised very differently because of what Finn taught me. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece of being okay with like, seizures and cancer and the brain tumor and all, you know, being told like what I do is wrecking him or hurting him, or there's nothing else you can do. And all the stories I heard with Finn and his journey that helped me to evolve, to do things differently and think about things differently and to just kind of let go some of the like control that's really hard for me that I can't fix everything and I don't know everything and I never will. That's such a, I like, I, I, I still have things I want to talk to you about, but I feel like that was <laughs> such a good, like, <laughs> that that could be a whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Cut. <laughs> right. Here's your short little clip. <laughs> How to but, just let well, go. <laughs> yeah. um, the other, the other piece of, you know, what I wanted to talk to you about, you actually, you've mentioned it a couple of times already. And that is, first of all, with gut health, um, yep. that's the new thing that everybody is talking about is, you know, we go through these like phases of <laughs> this and then oh, this and, um, and, and it is true. And when we think about like, the gut microbiome, we can continue researching and we can see that, oh, wait, we have a lot of different microbiomes. We have a skin microbiome and we have an oral microbiome and we have all of these different things that we can continue to get into the weeds about. <laughs> yep. Um, but you mentioned in a few different areas that, so with the hair tissue mineral analysis, um, that you, you use the results from those tests to help put the body back in, you know, do what you can to put the body back into homeostasis in various different ways. And you mentioned gut health there. And then you also mentioned gut health with our energetics. So yes. it, it sounds like, like it's something that literally everything affects our, yes. our gut health and our gut health. The, the very first thing I learned about our gut um, when this whole, everybody started talking about it was like, oh, 70% of your immune system. And of course, then it's like 70% or 80%, or we don't know exactly how much, but somewhere around 70% probably of our immune system is in our gut. And, you know, one of the reasons why processed foods is so damaging for us 
you know, we're, we're putting all of this into our body that shouldn't be there. And that is literally directly affecting our immune system. And yeah. why are we so obsessed with gut health right now? Why do you think? <laughs> I love how you said that. And here's, <laughs> here's a perspective shift for a lot of people. Cause I'm sure you see this too, with your clients where, you know, animal biome is the big microbiome test that we do. And people get test results back where it's normal, right? Or it's technically healthy, but their mm-hmm. pet's not healthy. Like they're right. still experiencing symptoms and they're like, well, if the like gut is everything, then what's <laughs> like, what's wrong, right. right? We can't take the gut and isolate it. That's the problem with conventional medicine is that we now have specialists in certain areas that focus, like dermatologists, they have zero clue how to treat the gut. Your gastroenterologist, I mean, I don't think most have even a clue how to fix the gut, to be honest, from my personal human health experience. But like when we start separating out these systems, we're forgetting about like a true holistic approach. That's like you said, the majority of the immune system is connected to the gut. But also where else is the immune system connected? It's connecting to the circulatory system. It's connected to the skin. It's connected to the brain. It's connected to the nervous system. So this is why when we like pigeonhole ourselves into certain areas, we tend to get limited results. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing too, I wanted to mention with, um, actually, I didn't address your question there, but the reason why it's so popular now is because we have all this research coming out. And we have like the ability to do microbiome testing. We have the ability to do like fecal transplants and all these things. And it's exciting. So there's like this excitingness to this, like, oh, this is new. This is the next fix, <laughs> like, right? This is the end all be all. Like this will fix everything because the gut's connected to everything, right? But in reality, from what I've seen and from personal experience, but also to just understanding those connections and what we talked about with like energy, if we forget the rest and we only focus on the gut, we're not going to heal the body or we might get short term limited results and then things will fall apart again and they might fall apart in a different way and manifest as a different physical symptom. So that's what I've seen to be true just from my personal experience working with a lot of like gut health, skin health issues and all of that. Now, going back to the emotional health and gut, I want everyone to think about for yourself or for your pets. A time when you were either really excited or really nervous. What happened physically, like in your body, like when you get really excited, like what do you feel? Or when you're really nervous, right? And you're like really scared, what can happen? Yeah, I, I always, both of those, I feel like right in my- Like, like in your like gut, right? Plexus area, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's the gut reaction. So that right there shows us the impact that that energy um, can happen. And that can lead directly to like diarrhea, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. when you look at those types of things or you look at your like dogs that go boarding, what happens? What's the number one thing that happens? They get stressed, they get anxious. And then the secondary result of that is diarrhea. Now, here's the thing. When we know a pet is experiencing that, yes, looking at the microbiome, doing testing, looking for overgrowth of like pathogenic bacteria like E. coli, clostridial overgrowth, lack of diversity. Yeah, very helpful. However, if we have a pet that's stuck in sympathetic overdrive, you can do all the like gut restore fecal transplants that you want. But if we have a brain on fire that's just constantly sending signals down to the brain, like alert, alert, we have a lot of inflammation, it's going to keep you stuck in a really, really frustrating loop, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to look at, okay, well, we're really stressed. Okay, the adrenals are really important for cortisol production, stress hormone production. What are some herbs that are really powerful and helpful? I love ashwagandha. I also love chamomile tea and, you know, other uh, herbs that are nervines or calming to the nervous system. Things like skullcap, valerian's amazing for cats and allowing them to self-select. So this is where when we better understand what's happening and we're aware of how our pets are responding to these situations, there's plenty of dogs that don't care, right? Their nervous systems are regulated, they're balanced. You could do whatever you want, put them in any situation. They don't get diarrhea because they're okay there. And so if you're seeing that in your pet, this is where going to, yes, we need to be aware of gut. The gut is important. It's a master of a lot of things in the body, 
But there's other things going on too, that if we forget about them or we miss them, or we just, you know, we kind of exclude them because they're like, oh, it's not as important. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all important in the end. Like your detox pathways, right? We could have a healthy microbiome, but if for some reason toxins are getting stuck in the body because the different phases in the of the detox aren't open, they get recirculated back into the bloodstream, they get stored in the tissues, and we end up with more inflammation or a toxic, you know, a toxic pet that mm-hmm. can manifest as ear infections. One of the patients recently that I've been working with, um, His name is Cole and he came to me with like really bad skin issues and all sorts of things. And once again, what are we treating with, right? We're treating Apoquel, tried Cytopoint injections. He'd been on steroids. She's like, it kind of helps, but then it comes right back. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm frustrated. Like something, obviously we're missing something. And so we did the hair tissue mineral analysis to talk, like to start with. We also did animal biome. There's other testing for thyroid is one that's commonly missed too. Your endocrine system, adrenals, thyroid, pituitary gland, very important um, for optimal health. And he was the highest heavy metal animal I have seen to date. And I was like, oh, this is not good. Like oh. crazy amounts, like crazy amounts of aluminum, mercury, and lead. And I was like, huh, we could wait, like we could go years and years throwing all the quercetin at this animal, healing like leaky gut protocols, like Mm -hmm. it wouldn't have mattered. Like we had to get the toxins out and support him and help him with digestion because he wasn't digesting his food. He was having secondary like food reactions. Like it was all interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so this is where people get stuck. So yes, I want people to learn and understand the importance of gut health and there's a lot of great research articles to share with your veterinarian to help them learn too. Very important. And testing can help identify areas where you're getting stuck, like acid reflux. A lot of times is an overgrowth of E. coli. So we can do a microbiome test and see and then go, oh, let's heal that. Let's get rid of the E. coli. But why is the E. coli there? Because the ecosystem's upset for some reason. So let's heal the ecosystem then too. And there's great, there's different ways to do that, but there's ways to definitely help heal the whole system. Um, So that's how I approach like optimizing, but we've got to remember like the first key thing is the removal phase that comes from like the stress. You're not going to remove all stress, right? Like the past three years have taught us that, like, you're like, I got this. And all of a sudden you're thrown a curveball, right? (laughs) Like, Just kidding. I'm now in my home for like a year. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I was Zen. We're not. Okay, cool. So there's always experiences for you to explore and learn and grow more in that area. But this is where like, where can I remove things that potentially create more inflammation or resistance to healing? And that helps optimize the microbiome. And then where are the things that we can use to support these systems that will also support the microbiome that's feeding, you know, less processed food, being aware of the chemicals around us. How do we support detoxification? There's great whole food options, you know, broccoli sprout. Sprouting is easy. If I can sprout things, anyone can sprout things. (laughs) And so, you know, getting, getting like broccoli sprouts or daikon radish sprouts, those are really fun to do and to watch and to watch it grow. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something really peaceful and powerful with that experience is like you're connected to what you're giving yourself and your pet. And then also to, you know, supporting an immune system. This is where, and gut health too, like colostrum, using kefirs, using your fermented foods, uh, making sure there's a little bit of, you know, we're feeding some fermentable fibers also because we need a food source for those microbes. And that's going to also help optimize the local gut immune system. So we're not getting overreactions. We're supporting digestion with digestive enzymes if needed to help break down the food. So it's actually utilized because I see that all the time where we have these imbalances and you're feeding the best quality food, but we haven't optimized digestion, especially with senior pets, right? So like Mm -hmm. raw food diets don't work a lot of times for an older pet because it's too cooling energetically. It's too hard on their digestion. They also lack a lot of the digestive enzymes as they age, just like us. So we can add those in to help them to break down the foods so that it's broken down into smaller things like amino acids versus whole proteins. Because if we get whole proteins in 
the last part of the gut, the large intestine, the immune system's right there going, what is this? There's something foreign here. And it's going to create a reaction that's going to set off inflammation and potentially lead to like itchy skin, diarrhea, other health issues. So when we think about, okay, remove, let's support. And then what, what do we do for maintenance, right? This is like your essential fatty acids. Let's get some omega-3s in there. It's going to help the membranes of the cells. And we have a lot of cells in our body. So keep them nice and fluid so they can get toxins out, that they can send neurotransmitters in and out. They can you know, communicate versus being rigid and not being able to move. There are also really good anti-inflammatories that are safe. So as our pets age, that's going to help with things like osteoarthritis, degenerative changes. So looking at your pet and just thinking in simple terms like that, like think about yourself. How do, like, what do I need to remove? What do I need to support? And what do I need for maintenance? Can be very, very powerful and helpful. And it's not about, once again, adding all the things. It's about like, okay, let's try this and see how my pet feels and keeping a journal so that you can get a better idea of what worked. Um, and what didn't, but when I say didn't, it might be working. You're just not necessarily seeing a hundred percent of change, but it's working at a cellular level. So mm -hmm. making sure you're giving yourself time and space for these things to actually create change for your pet is really, really important too. And a, an area that I see people give up on stuff way too soon because we expect immediate results. Once again, thank you, conventional medicine for that. So thank you. Actually, I say thank you, Amazon for like one hour delivery. We expect immediate yeah. results. I'm grateful. Like, don't get me wrong. But when we're looking at healing the body, it's a journey. Your pet mm -hmm. didn't get to where they are today overnight, and they're not going to heal overnight too. So we have to shift. Once again, it's a perspective shift that right. is very helpful when you are looking at how do I best support my pet and what are realistic expectations for what I'm expecting to see for their healing journey. Oh. That was a lot. That was a lot. But it was great information. Thank you so much. Especially, like, two things really popped out to me. One, um, there are so many people right now doing the, like, fecal, fecal microbiota transplant capsules because it's hard to find yeah. somebody who's going to, like, yeah. do the in-office procedures. That That's just not easy to come by but um yeah like they are more often than not it's like why this isn't working why is this not working? like everybody's talking about how wonderful this is why is this not working and it's like because you didn't then lay the groundwork <laughs> yeah and sure. also too you sometimes like sometimes you need multiple rounds of it but also too oh, keep yeah. in mind you're putting microbes into a damaged gut right usually and so if we haven't repaired like the gut lining, if we haven't optimized that to create an environment that's going to like nurture those, like what you're putting in, right. of course, it's not going to stay Yeah. because we didn't actually fix the why for why the microbes weren't happy in the first place. Right. So that's how I also look at that. So if you, you've tried a round of it and that's all you've done, make sure that we're looking at what are the other factors that also support healing. And it could be a stress, like a stress thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're like, this has to work. This is it. This is the Holy Grail. This yeah. is going to fix everything, right? Right. And maybe we actually need to take a step back and do some breathing or, you know, like letting go, like, this is good. Let's see what happens. Let's explore this versus this needs to fix my pet. Mm -hmm. Or that's like, I'm not going to do okay. Very right. different energies when we're like, let's explore this. This has helped a lot of pets. Great. Let's see what, like, what this does for Fluffy, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And, but keeping in mind, we usually have damage in other areas to create imbalances because everything's interconnected. So thinking about, okay, what are the foods I'm feeding? Is that nurturing the gut? Are there things I can add in like bone broth that's really rich in glycine and collagen that's going to like soothe the gut lining? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be like really expensive supplements. It can be right. simple things like bone broth and, you know, L-glutamine is really powerful for healing the, the gut too. So keep that in mind, especially for all the pet parents that might be listening where they're like, it doesn't work. Well, why isn't it working? Let's go back to the foundations. Let's think about yeah. the interconnections. And mm -hmm. it could be an emotional thing because I said you can't feed a stressed body back to health. Yes. 
And speaking of a stressed body, I'm also really glad you mentioned valerian for cats being able to self-select it. Because as you were talking about all of these things, my brain is just pinging. There is no way, like, I, I've come to the point where, yeah, I have bought a bazillion supplements for my cats and I have tried them all, but getting these supplements in my cat is causing just as much, if not more stress than what's actually happening when, I, when yes. I'm trying to use the supplement for. And so that the idea of self-selection and having various like herbs and things for our cats to self-select can be really, really powerful. So I'm really glad you brought that up too. Yes. Um, I have three cats and um, I can definitely relate to that. And a lot of times we, treat cats very differently. They're not small dogs. They are very, dogs are energetic beings, but cats take it to the next level and they will mirror and model for you. Um, we will obviously don't have time to go into that. Like you can look that up and see kind of what those mean. Um, but it's interesting. They will, they will take on stress. They will absorb things. And a lot of times, especially with gut health issues with like vomiting, diarrhea, there's stagnant energy or like the energy is not flowing with like vomiting is stagnant. And so this is where those herb gardens are really, really helpful. And I'm not saying you have to grow an herb garden. <laughs> this is like taking dried organic herbs, like a tablespoon of herbs and putting it down on a towel in a quiet space and allowing them to choose what their body needs at that moment. It is one of the coolest things, Julianne Thorne, who's a dear friend and colleague, um, naturally cats, she has an entire book on how to do this and different herbs for different physical health and emotional health concerns. So that is a go-to resource for me. Um, I use it with my own cats. This morning, my cat was sitting on chamomile flowers and also to like, they'll self-select things like peppermint if they're vomiting. Um, they'll select if the valerian's really good for multi-cat households. They won't always self-select things. And when I say self-select, they'll sit on it. They might lay near it. They can go and sniff it. Um, they might eat it. So that's why I recommend using organic in case they are ingesting it. Mm -hmm. And just give it a try. Like, it is so fun to watch them engage with it. And then also, too, like, release the expectation that they will use it. Because once again, that's us like controlling and trying to fix it. Um, but those would be some of the options. Catnip is another one I use, not for like the high properties. My cats will eat it for appetite stimulant, for nausea. So it has different therapeutic properties depending on how they engage with that herb. Mm -hmm. So, and keep in mind too, not every cat has the genes for like getting high off of catnip. So they may still ingest it. Like my cats don't get high off of it. They just will go and eat it. And then they sit there and then they'll actually go and eat their food. So it's interesting. That's, it's really powerful. Cause I agree a hundred percent with you, Jessica. Like I'm not, my cats will not tolerate me supplementing them by mouth twice a day. One of my cats won't eat her food if I put supplements in the food. So we have to get more creative with how we support them. And sometimes it's okay. We get, we get to choose from one or two, like the, the two supplements, right? Which one today? And we can rotate supplements if that's what they're going to allow. But we have to respect that or else we will create more emotional distress, which then leads to physical dis-ease. So. Yeah. Well, Dr. Katie Woodley, thank you so much for everything you brought today. I know it wasn't exactly <laughs> what we had prepped for, but I actually love that. I love when we just kind of like go off on whatever we were actually supposed to be talking about. <laughs> hey, the universe meant it to be this way. Yes, I believe that as well. And um, I know I will we'll obviously have everything in the show notes where people can find you on all the different social medias and um, but I do know you have, do, are you still doing that like master class thing that people can sign up for to? So we have, so what we have, we have a couple master classes. We have a couple free master classes that are on our YouTube channel and I can definitely share those links. So it's easy to access yeah. um, for everyone in the show notes. Um, so we have a better gut health master class, And then we also, so that kind of leads into and talks about our gutter, better gut health uh, program. That's a self-paced program. So that's where people can dive deeper into their dogs and cats. If you're experiencing like gut or skin issues and finding like root cause and helping like everything that we talked about, it covers 
along those lines, but it's self-paced. Um, now we also have you know, how to find the root cause masterclass. This leads into, we have a lifetime, like healthy, holistic pet for life blueprint program. So this is where I support pet parents who are experiencing gut health issues and they're getting stuck. So this helps them uncover like, where are we stuck? Why are we stuck? What's going on? So like Cole with all the heavy metal issues, helping to guide, you know, his, his pet parent, like through all of that, how do we heal? But in a safe space where we have a private community, where I'm supporting you and guiding you and giving you specific individual feedback and help. We also do live weekly Q&A calls um, that are all recorded. So you can reference back to that and ask questions and learn more and just be amongst some like so many amazing pet parents. They're just so wonderful. And then also to the education side. So taking you deeper into the foundations of health and how everything is interconnected. Because when things are off, as you're learning from, you know, all the things that Jessica teaches and all the amazing guests you bring on that share this information, when things are off, that's what leads to disease. And so this is where being able to better understand and become aware of how that can happen so we can proactively prevent it, but also heal our pets that are experiencing these health issues. So it takes you through that with my guidance. So we do uh, free discovery calls for that program because it's an application only program. So if pet parents want to learn more, they can always jump on a call um, or, or watch the masterclass first. The masterclass is free and get a better idea. Um, but we do do calls to make sure it's a good fit for everyone. Um, and then if it's a great fit, then we get started with a hair tissue test and go from there. That's awesome. Yeah, I would love for all of you to watch um, the master classes and see what resonates with you because there's so much valuable information. And um, I just, we just never know, like, what is the next thing that's going to trigger like this, like, this is what I needed, right? And <laughs> yeah. so I, I, highly encourage you to at least start with the master classes and thank you again so much for being here dr kitty i yeah. appreciate you so much and i uh, look forward to having you back on at some point oh, thanks jessica <laughs> thank you so much and thank you to all the incredible pet parents who have taken time out of their day and to learn more and grow and have fun exploring with your pet um so hey. thank you so much for having me back <laughs>